he's the shove it man. Oh, he's the shove it man. He's gonna shove it. Yeah. He's gonna shove it man. It's been a while since we sprayed, so it's time to watch some NWA. Honestly, it feels like I have so many different series going on right now, I don't know which way to turn. I still want to continue my TNA fantasy booking. Wouldn't it be funny if that series could get more views than an actual episode of Impact? Anyway, on to the show. Sting is now in TNA. That's pretty much all that happened. Oh, and we're having the first ever TNA Steel Cage match on this episode. And surprisingly, we start TNA off with that very cage match. America's most wanted to challenge for the tag belts that belong to Triple X, Daniels and Skipper. I guess Loki's still out injured. This match has the potential to be insane. Mike Tanay clears up the SEX faction on commentary. He says that Russo owns the rights and he's not letting anyone use it. What a way to end a faction that existed for half of TNA's existence at this point. Skipper and Daniel start off with a double team suplex on Harris. AMW respond with some clunky work in the corner leading to a Harris Bulldog. This match is only winnable by pinfall and tag rules apply. Chris Harris is the first man to taste the steel cage, it doesn't taste like cherry pie. Skipper throws him at it again. Harris is busted open. Chris Harris desperately tries to fight back so he lets Skipper shuts him down with a double springboard moonsault. Crowd like that one. It continues to go badly for Harris, he's kicked now by Daniels. Chris Harris does eventually manage to hit a clothesline and he tags the cowboy in. James Storm with a really nice move to send Skipper into the cage, he also gives Daniels a running net breaker. James Storm hits the power slam now for a two count. Daniels calms him down by sending him into the cage and squashing him against it. Triple X wants to hit a double team move now, Skipper slips off the top rope and the crowd are all over him. They eventually do a suplex crossbody block combo on Storm. Then we get a mid-ring collision, two heads smash together and Chris Harris gets the hot tag. Harris sends the Triple X boys into the cage time and time again. One of my favourite moves up next is the Chris Harris Bull Nelson slam but he can't get the free. He tries the catatonic on Daniels which he reverses and nails the Angels wings for a two count. This cage looks like it's barely held together, it's wobbling everywhere. Storm and Daniels start fighting while stood on the top rope which leads to a Daniels STO. Elix Skip gives Harris a belly to belly and a judo type throw, still no idea what to call that one, I think I asked last time. Another big move now is James Storm hitting the top rope powerbomb on Elix Skipper. Christopher Daniels with the overdrive now, everyone's starting to bust out the big moves. Now Harris and Daniels are fighting on the top rope, Chris Harris hits him with a diving spear. Really fun match this one. Elix Skipper sort of hits the player of the day, it doesn't look great but we'll let him off. Elix Skipper then decides to climb the cage even though there's no winning for escaping it. He's of course only there to do a dive and he pisses in the wind on James Storm. That's just a two count. Seconds later Skipper has climbed the cage again but this time he's knocked to the floor by Chris Harris. Daniels is very upset that his little friend has been knocked out of the cage. James Storm hits Daniels with a super kick, then something goes wrong. AMW try the death sentence but I think Harris slips mid dive and it looks like bird turd. Luckily that one doesn't end the match. Skipper just can't get back into the cage, AMW keeps stopping him. AMW decide to try the death sentence again but this time Chris Harris climbs to the top of the cage. They hit a super death sentence and that's how this match ends. America's most wanted are the tag team champions once again, now they're three time champions, it's only 2003. A really good match, it wasn't the cleanest match but you really got the sense that both teams were trying to kill each other, what a way to start TNA. D'Lo Brown will now cut a promo in the cage, he says he came to TNA to be the world heavyweight champion. He doesn't like AJ Styles because he's chosen to be aligned with Russo. This brings out AJ and they immediately start fighting. D'Lo gives him an alley-oop on the ropes. Now he does a Luthez press and he screams at the crowd, what's up with that? AJ Styles is getting completely battered but I don't think this is an actual match. Styles eventually turns it around and he tries to escape by climbing the cage even though there's a perfectly good door and D'Lo knocks him from the cage. D'Lo is still beating Styles up and then this randomly turns into an official match, seems pretty unfair on Styles. AJ turns the tables with a chair shot. This is another violent and bloody brawl. D'Lo gets a two count on the big wind up slam, then he hits the biggest sky high of all time. That one really was in the sky. D'Lo wants to finish him with a low down and he decides he needs to do this from the top of the cage. But unfortunately Vince Russo stops him with a baseball bat and then there's a ref bump. D'Lo is knocked off the cage and then the ref calls for DQ. AJ gives him a bat body drop suplex to add insult to injury. AJ Styles keeps up the attack of a steel chair. Then, a wild slap nuts appears. Double J, Jeff Jarrett. He wants to try and help, but he's stopped by the red shirt security. I'm surprised Jeff didn't smack them, he usually does. AJ Styles hits the Styles Clash before some geeks come out to protect D'Lo. In the car park outside, Shane Douglas is beating up Julio De Niro. Mickey's also here and she screams oh shit when she sees Douglas. Shane Douglas gives Julio a belly to belly out in the car park and then he makes his way into the arena. The franchise is here to talk about things that happened in ECW back in 1994. He cuts this promo stood in the raven perch position. 
Shane Douglas says an old friend in management managed to get him into TNA as long as he takes out Raven. The man called Raisin eventually gets sick of the promo and he attacks Shane Douglas. Unfortunately for him, the gifted Glenn Gilberti, how is he gifted, attacks Raven. Pepsi Punk rushes to protect Raven, but he's kicked down the stairs. Slap Nuts appears again with a chair and the hills are terrified of him. Now it's an unsanctioned fight in the car park. Jerry Lynn and Just Incredible. Credible is lobbed for offence. They're now fighting in someone's back garden. They end up in the back of a pickup truck. Lynn hits a low blow and throws Credible into a stack of trays. Why is there a half broken table in the car park? TNA really need to learn to put things back in the bin. They start coming into the building where Credible is thrown into a piece of cardboard. Jerry Lynn dives over a guardrail. He also shunts Credible into the stripper's cage. The stripper runs and clearly gets out of the way, but now the stripper who's called Lollipop is somehow hurt. Lynn's trying to be a gentleman, but Credible isn't one. They keep fighting on the ramp with Credible hitting a bat body drop. Then completely randomly and out of the blue, Jerry Lynn rolls up Credible. A three minute match which was a massive anti-climax. Lynn's starting to flirt with the cage dancer which leaves the door open for Credible. He handcuffs Lynn to the stripper cage and beats him with a steel chair. The ref doesn't care about Lynn, he only wants to care about the stripper, what a dick. It ends with Credible spitting on Lynn and walking off. In the mould locker room, oh so this faction is still together. Disco slaps Daniels and says to get the tag titles back. He's handing out orders left, right and centre, and then he randomly starts insulting Shark Boy. I think Disco has much more bigger things to worry about than Shark Boy. What will this mighty group call themselves now they can't use SEX? Leave your suggestions down below. A next division match now will be Frankie Kazarian taking on Chris Sabin in a singles match. This is a non-title one. Sabin starts out working on the arm. Kaz turns it around and does the same thing. They have a pretty nice trade-off ending with a Sabin snap Harakurana. Kaz fights back for springboard and some drop kicks. Chris Sabin tries to fight back but he's crushed for a springboard DDT. Now Kazarian with a flurry of moves ending with a single leg drop kick. Chris Sabin reverses his next move into a DDT. Don West points out that the crowd are amazed that they're actually seeing a normal match here. Sabin with a beautiful flip dive to the outside of the ring. He comes back to the ring with a springboard clothesline, two count. Now we get the trade off with pinning attempts. The crowd are silent, not sure why. Maybe it's because they've seen so much craziness on this show already that they're burnt out. Sabin with the jumping into Guru which shuts down Kaz. These two seem to be completely even, I'm not even sure which man's going to win this one. Sabin tries a victory roll which is a bad mistake because Kaz reverses it with the back to the future. It's not over though, Kaz starts messing around on the top rope and out of nowhere Sabin throws him with a released German suplex. That's not free either. Kaz with a Death Valley driver into the turnbuckles which also puts Sabin into the tree of woe. Kaz tries a springboard coast to coast which Sabin easily dodges, I think he moved a bit too soon for my liking. Sabin hits Kaz with a spinning backbreaker for a two count. Eventually Sabin's finisher is reversed into Kaz's finisher, but Sabin's able to kick out of that too. This match is having so much time dedicated to it. Sabin hits a dragon suplex for a two count now. His following dive is cut off by Kaz and I believe for the first time we see the flux capacitor from Kaz and that's the three. What an incredible match that was, so far this is the best episode of TNA in their history. The promos have been short and the matches have been good, but we're still getting some storylines mixed in. Oh no, Shane Douglas is back again. He says he's an expert on the wrestling business. He calls out Slap Nuts for getting involved in his business earlier tonight. He challenges Slappy and Raven to take on Douglas and the gifted Glenn Gilberti. That is a main event I have absolutely no interest in seeing. Just not rating right the cage dance tonight, she looks at least 50. Kid Cash will have a match now against Eric Watts. This I believe is his first ever TNA match. About time, he's been hanging around in the TNA locker room like a bad smell for months. Eric Watts is a tall man who dresses like a geek. Kid Cash tries to springboard him but he's caught and suplexed overhead. The comedy team explain that Eric Watts is nicknamed Mr Explosion because he's undefeated on Explosion. What a weird thing to call yourself, name yourself after a show that literally nobody watches, is that meant to impress anyone? Kid Cash stops him now with a diving hurricanrana off the steel steps. He comes back into the ring with a diving clothesline for a two count. Cash does alright for a bit before getting shut down with a boot and a leg drop. It's like watching a young Hawk Hogan. Watts is a fake main eventer so he's drop kicked in the back of the leg by Kid Cash. It's going to be hard to take him seriously after this match. It's nothing against Kid Cash but he's literally getting dominated by a man half his size. Kid Cash has never been booked as anything more than an X Division competitor at this point so why is Watts struggling? Watts eventually does something and he hits something a bit like Billy Gunn's one and only. Nice bit now as Cash tries to spring into a crossbody but Watts counters him and slams him. Kid Cash tries another one like a complete idiot and this time it's a botched head scissors. Cash tries to move on quickly of a tornado DDT. Kid Cash is unable to hit the money maker and Watts turns it into an Alabama slam. Eric Watts is now fighting back with some basic offense. The powerbomb attempt is reversed by Cash and then there's a ref bump. Eric Watts hits the last ride but no ref. 
The Monster Abyss appears in the ring and there it is, Black Hole Slam. The ref wakes up immediately to count the three. Goldilocks rushes out to check on her boyfriend Eric Watts. A decent match, a bit botchy. The show slows down a bit now with some free live crew. I have literally no understanding of any of their jokes. It sounds like it's deep south humour. No idea who Mrs Butterworth is or what a double wide is. Court Bats or Philly Blunts? What? Sammy Corza, who? Barry Bonds. Mold Dog is trying to sell us a playing card for Barry Bonds, whoever that is. So far, Free Life Crew sucks Sonny Siaki's ass. I never have any idea what they're talking about. The only bad part of the show so far. Things improve now because Shark Boy is sat in a paddling pool getting a lecture from New Jack. Jack tells him that the shark should be watching his back and scouting his opponents for his upcoming match. The shark wants Jack to get in the pool. New Jack refuses because black people don't like water and last time it didn't go well for them. Now the shark wants him to throw hoops at an octopus. Jack eventually says screw it and dives in the paddling pool. A truly legendary segment. Oh no, it's the hard 10 tournament. How is this thing still not over? It's a semi-final match between the Sandman and Sonny. Don't look at my ass, Siaki. Do you know what? I'm disgusted with the lack of Sonny Siaki on these shows lately. Siaki scores one point already despite the bell not ringing. Siaki then goes 2-0 up. They are in the ring now. Sandman puts a chair on his face and hits a leg drop to score his first point. Hack then puts Siaki on the ropes and hits a chair-assisted guillotine leg drop. We're tied to all now. The Sandman decides now is a good time to light up a cigarette. He gives the cigarette to the referee who's disgusted by it. Sonny Siaki manages a drop toehold now which sends the Sandman into some chairs. Siaki randomly decides to smoke which almost makes him throw up. The Sandman no sells Siaki's next move but Sonny throws a trash can out of the ring in his face. What the hell, Siaki have a splash on Sandman through the table now but it's still not over as Siaki only has 9 points. Somehow the Sandman is the first man up and he starts scoring some points to catch up. A 6 year old boy hands Sandman a weapon, how things have changed. Siaki is now set up on the table and the match ends with the Sandman hitting a swanton bomb through the table. Dude, I was watching the Hard 10 tournament semi-final the other day man. And this dude, the Sandman, he stole my swanton bomb finishing maneuver man. Man, hardcore hack, I'm going back to Carolina and I'm going to tell my stone of friend Shannon all about you, Sandman. It ends with Siaki bailing from the ring because he's scared of New Jack. Now New Jack has a microphone. He asks the Sandman if they ever imagined that they'd be fighting again. Jack says he's going to show Sandman where all the gangster stuff started. In the meantime, they share a beer. What a fantastic 10 minutes of television that was. I think I loved everything about it. Things go downhill now because Jarrett is here to do an interview. He says he's up for the challenge teaming with Raven tonight. Raven appears and says he's fine as long as Jeff doesn't stroke him from behind. Sounds a bit weird. Siaki appears screaming, where's Vince Russo? Back in the paddling pool, Mike Sanders is beating up the shark and trying to unmask him. Elsewhere, Jerry Lynn is still threatening Just Incredible. He says they're going to have a Russian chain match. Enough said. Yay, Goldilocks has caught up with Don't Look at His Ass. He says he won't say why he's looking for Russo, but he promises that things are about to change in TNA. Trinity walks up and puts Goldilocks in a sleeper, so I guess it's a heel turn. I just don't care about the main event, I'm sorry. Gifted Glenn Gilbert in Douglas vs Raven and Slapnuts. I just can't take Gilberti serious as a main eventer and Douglas isn't much better. It's pretty bad. We do get a funny Slapnuts botch in this one. He just randomly falls down and looks confused. Jarrett hits Gilberti with the guitar and then he makes the cover and the ref gets to a two count and then he just falls out of the ring. It looks so dumb, I think Douglas missed his cue. Father James Mitchell is here for some reason, and then it's revealed that the reason is to throw a fireball in Raven's face. And just like that, the show ends. I feel like this was almost a perfect episode. It was let down by that final match, but a really good show overall. Dare I say it, this actually felt like a pay-per-view. Let's see if that trend continues and check out our next episode. This one starts out with the franchise Shane Douglas in the middle of the ring surrounded by trash. He says he's been a bit controversial. Well, no, he's not really done anything of note, actually. He lets us know that Raven is in hospital due to the fireball incident. He's still complaining about things from 1994 when Douglas threw the NWA belt in the trash. This guy seriously needs to get a grip and come into the modern day. Next week, when Raven returns, Douglas will send him back to that hospital. But for now, Douglas will fight Pepsi Punk in a Clockwork House of Orange match. Punk is out wrestling him in the crowd chant, We Want Pepsi. He hits a suicide dive, which they love. Douglas does turn it around eventually. Then like a complete idiot, Punk throws the trash can to Douglas and then he dives straight into the shot. I mean, what was he expecting? Douglas is now using a tennis racket as a weapon. Should have hit him like a ball, why did he use the handle bit? Punk with a nice reversal now from the corner and he dives with a steel chair shot. 
He also hits a nice backbreaker for a two count. He's eventually stopped when he's kicked in the slash zone. Douglas now has brass knuckles wrapped in tissue for some reason. He hits him in the face and then the belly to belly gets the free. The devil, Father James Mitchell, is here again. Punk spits in his face. Mitchell shoots him with a pellet gun. Well, apparently it was a fireball, but it looked like a pellet gun. The gathering run off the bad guys. Jeff Jarrett up next for a promo. He can't say anything because Russo walks out straight away looking like the biggest geek of all time. He sets up a camping chair. He looks really pleased with himself. Russo says Jarrett looks stressed. He starts doing slap nuts impressions accompanied by the fake accent. Russo says Jarrett will not be getting a shot at Styles' belt. Jarrett says the name of the show is Total Non-Stop Action, not Tits and Asses. He rushes Russo but he's stopped by just Joey Legend who is debuting tonight. They fight in the crowd for ages. He throws Jeff Jarrett over the crowd barrier and it doesn't look great. Legend throws Jeff on the stairs again, it still doesn't look great. The kick into the steps sends Jeff flying. I think I'd prefer if this was an actual match because I don't understand why nobody's breaking this up. It's been like 10 minutes at this point. Legend looks like he almost breaks his leg when he misses a top rope leg drop. Jarrett puts on the figure 4 leg lock before AJ Styles makes the save. Legend and Styles kill Jarrett together. They tape him up on the ring ropes and Russo is back for baseball bat and he hits him in the gut. Russo introduces Jeff to Joey Legend and there won't be any title rematches with Styles. Finally some geeks turn up. What were they all outside having a smoke break with Siaki and Sandman? We're now half an hour into the show and it feels like literally nothing has happened. What a contrast to the previous episode. Out now it's Sonny, don't look at his ass Siaki and the master of the cab driver slam David Young. Somehow they will be challenging for the tag titles. Not sure what they ever did to qualify for them. The champions are of course America's most wanted. Siaki gets a one count of a crossbody block. Harris does one back for a two so I guess his crossbody block is better. AMW go full force with the double team in. They hit about three double team moves. I guess the ref is biased, he doesn't like cab drivers. The comrades team remind us that if David Young gets anyone with the spine buster, it's all over. That very man is in now. He doesn't do well when he's hit of a Storm Alabama slam. AMW have an atomic drop Russian leg sweep combination now. The blue boys turn it around via cheating. Young slams Storm and it seems like Siaki wants to dive but then he loses his nerve. James Storm with a big power slam on the cabbie now. He crawls to the wrong corner like a moron. Then he finds the right corner and he tags out. Harris with the catatonic, it should be over, but Siaki breaks up the pin. The sit out pile driver from Siaki now. We've seen some big moves in this one, but we still haven't seen the biggest move of all time. Wait, there it is, the cab driver slam, the cab driver slam, it's over. This match is over, the whole world's over. Wait, no, Harris kicks out. Unfortunately, Young is super kicked and then given the death sentence. I really thought the team of Don't Look At My Cab had a chance at winning the championship. A fun match. In the back, Kid Cash is screaming, Hello Big Scary Dude, are you there? He's trying to bribe Abyss with chocolate bars to come out of his cage. He isn't actually called Abyss yet, but little known fact, Kid Cash now gives him the name Abyss because he likes hanging around in dark places apparently. Eric Watts jumps Kid Cash from out of nowhere, but this will actually be the very first match of Abyss taken on Eric Watts. And I know someone's going to say it in the comments section. I mean the first match of the Abyss character. We're not talking about justice here. It's so weird seeing Abyss wrestle in jeans. Abyss hits the shock treatment backbreaker which gets him a two count, another backbreaker follows. Eventually the Abyss misses a dive and Watts has a chance despite looking like a dork. Watts hits the power slam which gets him a two count. Surprisingly Watts is able to hit the choke slam, then there's a ref bump. Kid Cash holds onto the monster's leg as Abyss desperately tries not to expose his stomach. I know I've always called him the idiot but I had no idea he was an idiot in his very first TNA match. He seems like he's trying to do a moonsault so Watts simply power bombs him from the top. Eric Watts also takes out Kid Cash, but when he gets up, Abyss is back up. There's the black hole slam and there's the free. Abyss carries his little friend away to go eat some chocolate bars in the darkness, I guess. It's now a really long, boring interview with Steve Borden. He looks pale and bored. He basically praises Jerry Jarrett for 10 minutes for giving him his first chance in wrestling. He calls the ultimate warrior bizarre and then it ends. What an overhyped interview for so little payoff. Now it's a Russian chain match. Why it's Russian, I have no idea. Just incredible taking on Jerry Lynn again, because the last match was just so amazing we have to see it again. It's a chain match, there isn't much to say. Okay, quite decent spot in this one though when Lynn keeps yanking on the chain force Incredible into the pole. Lynn starts biting Credible, it seems a bit out of character for him. It ends when Lynn hogties Just Incredible with the chain and pins him. Good, now don't ever wrestle again. Ugh, Credible attacks him straight away. He's literally been beaten twice, he's clearly the worst man. He does a tombstone pile driver into the chain. Credible in TNA sucks. Lollipop, the cage dancer, wants to check on Jerry Lynn. The camera zooms on in our ass and it ends. Kazarian is in the back complaining at some goon that he deserves an X Division title match. AJ Styles walks up being a dick. 
It's mic'd so poorly I can't even hear him. He gives Kaz a shot at the world title for no reason at all. AJ the Hill Champion is a fighting champion handing out shots to the younger guys. Oh wow, Pirate Mike Sanders is actually having a match. Feels like it's been a while. He'll be facing the Shark. This is actually the final match of Mike Sanders in TNA. Sad times. Sanders really needs some blonde just for men at this point. All the mould from the TNA locker room has turned his hair a different colour. Shark Boy with a Russian leg sweep and a drop kick. Sanders blocks an attack in the corner but walks right into an arm drag. The Shark is now biting his hand. Mike Sanders does manage a kick now which gets him a 2. Mike Sanders isn't really trying to win this match, instead he just wants to unmask him like Glenn Gilberti asked him to. Sanders looks like the biggest indie wrestler of all time. Then Sanders reverses a crossbody attempt into a pin of his own but it's not enough. Mike Sanders is able to fight off the deep sea drop, but his obsession with trying to unmask Shark Boy costs him and he's rolled up for the free. The Harris boys quickly storm the ring and they try to hit the H-bomb but the Shark slides away. The Harris brothers are still in a bad mood and they try and hit the H-bomb on Sanders, whilst Mike Tanay sarcastically says he's really upset for Sanders. Now the free live crew are sitting in front of pictures of TNA wrestlers making fun of them, except it's not funny, it's the complete opposite of this channel. Tracy and Nurse Veronica are in the ring now, she starts doing a promo saying that she has something that she needs to get off her chest as the cameraman zooms in. She is upset that women are no longer allowed to fight men. Why is Nurse Veronica a nurse? They make an open challenge which is answered by Lollipop and April Pennington. The security geeks prevent the fight and it ends. Why are they giving the cage dancers characters now? The Hard 10 tournament final is next. New Jack taking on the Sandman. New Jack starts off using a staple gun which somehow doesn't seem to count as a weapon shot for some reason. Sandman hits a trash can shot for his first point. His next shot is blocked with New Jack's chair and then he scores a point. Another point with the trash can now. New Jack is 2-1 up. Sandman retrieves his kendo stick and he gets 2 points from that. New Jack starts getting weapons from the crowd. Both men are heavily busted open. They fight their way into the crowd and up some steps. We're now on a score of 7-5. Now on a balcony. It's hard to see which way this one's going. Jack tries a finishing blow with a chair. He takes a run up off a box. He lets out a funny scream as Hack throws him off the balcony and through a table. Sandman is the winner of the Hard 10 tournament and New Jack is a crazy man. Congratulations to Sandman for finally winning something in TNA. NWA Impact brings you the smack of the week. Sponsored by all new Blonde for Men. If you're a brown haired Potter, put some blonde in it. It makes you look hot. Oh, it's New Jack, man. Oh, he wallops the sand, man, like a salmon. That's one point for New Jack. This hard 10 penis tournament's insane. New Jack's looking for the killer blow, man. He steps up on a crate with his chair. He takes a run up. Oh, he dives in. No! New Jack falls off the balcony. He's not alive. How can he be? That was the NWA TNA Smack of the Week. Sponsored by Blonde Just for Men. Get it? Got it? Shove it. And I think it's just the main event left now. Frankie Kazarian challenging for the World Heavyweight title. AJ Styles the champion. This could be a really good one as we still have got 20 minutes of the show left. Kazarian actually has one year's wrestling experience over AJ. AJ Styles is really cocky in the early going as he arm drags Kaz all over the ring. Kaz drops his cockiness with a drop kick. He also hits a clothesline and a springboard leg drop for a two count. Kazarian's then sent out to the ring apron but he slingshots back in with a DDT. AJ has to bail from the ring because he's getting his ass handed to him. Not a move from Kaz that I've seen before now as he head scissors AJ back into the ring. AJ hides in the corner and dumps his nappy of fear. He's actually just playing possum to get the advantage. AJ stars with a nice swing and net breaker now, getting lots of moves we're not seeing that often. Nice leg extension and a kick from Styles. Something else new from AJ now, he sort of head scissors Kazarian across the ropes with a guillotine effect. Styles starts playing with the crowd. He doesn't want to dive out the ring because he's a heel now. Instead he gets Kaz in the ring and he hits the brain buster. This match is all Styles and it's a great match. Kazarian gets the odd lucky roll up before Styles shuts him down each time. We get a double down on the most intense double cross body attempt I've ever seen. The ref is an idiot and tries to look after Styles which allows Saban to interfere. He has a bat breaker on Kaz and doesn't get the free for Styles. AJ is unable to connect with his next move and he ends up stuck on the top rope. Saban distracts the referee and this time Trinity interferes. AJ dives but Kaz kicks him in midair. The crowd are chanting TNA. Trinity with a diving Huracurana but she hits Styles instead of Kaz. They both reverse finishers, ending with Kaz hitting the wave of the future. That's just a two. Kaz is still having to fight all the people on the outside, but he gets sick of it eventually and takes them out of the dive. He springboards back in, but AJ catches him with a powerbomb. He doesn't release his grip and picks Kaz up and hits the Styles Clash. And what a Styles Clash, he almost killed Kaz. The three friends keep on attacking Kaz, and now Russo's here with his bat again. He hits Kaz in the gut. D'Lo Brown makes the save, so this is the title match we're building to, and you know what, it makes perfect sense. 
you know what doesn't make sense though? Why is Russo forming a new faction when he already had SEX? And they wanted to do his bidding, but he turned against them. He's just replacing one heel faction with another for literally no reason. I don't get it. D'Lo asked to fight Styles next week. Instead, it'll be a tag with Russo and Styles taking on D'Lo and a mystery man. The crowd sound bored. And that's it, my little friends. What a contrasting show. Only things worth watching on this one was New Jack's fall off the balcony and the main event was good too. And the Hawk will be back the same time next week. Same Shove It squad, same Shove It channel because I've got endurance like camels. Ask your girl how I grab her handles.